So today we're going to have a look at the gear that I use for small game hunting with an air gun. It's probably one of the most regularly asked questions we get through social media and through the YouTube channel. And actually it's quite straightforward. In fact, everything that I normally take out, I'm either wearing or is here in front of you. Of course, I've got my trusty Helion XP thermal imager and Vanguard B62 shooting sticks, but everything else fits into this bag here. First off, we have our Hawk Frontier HDX binoculars, an 8x32, nice, lightweight, compact, great sight picture through those, really good image quality, great light transmission, but not too heavy. When you're working in and around trees, you don't need huge amount of magnification, and what you need is a wide angle field of view, and that ability to be able to differentiate between what's in front of you and what's behind. So top quality pair of binoculars that aren't gonna weigh you down. In front here, in this Aeron's bag, some nifty pockets. The Essential Air Arms Diablo Field, now these are 2-2, two -two, 16 grains, and perfect for this type of middle distance shooting, anything from 20 up until around 50 yards, so great terminal performance on those and fabulous accuracy. I also have here a pellet pouch, so I've had this for about 15 years or so, leather clip fronted pellet pouch on a bit of string there, so I only tend to take one magazine with me, 10 shot magazine in the rifle, and I tend to reload it as I go, so that's always quite helpful. Then I have the Essential Hawk Endurance LRF 1000 Rangefinder. Now this is an amazing bit of kit, about half the size of the previous 900 yard version, and this genuinely does go out to 1000 yards in all light conditions. So of course we're not going to need that here. Mainly I'm going to be ranging for, for squirrels and pigeons and rooks and just see roughly how far they are. Are they 30 yards? Are they 35 yards? Are they 40 yards? The difference for me with shooting the rifle I'm shooting today is about half a mil dot to a mil dot if it's out at 50 yards. So knowing your aim points and knowing your distances is pretty critical. I have my trusty Buck 110 Folding Hunter. This once again has been in my hunting collection for about 20 years. It's got a pointed edge now for deer stalking. I tend to use a drop point skinner. Helps prevent nicking the guts as I'm growling. But something like the Buck 110 Folding Hunter because it's got a point at the end. It's really good for detail work. So when you're growling squirrels, rabbits, resting people, Pigeons. It's very useful to have that additional point on the end there. And of course, alongside that, this Blade Tech Blaze Orange to put an edge back on. Of course, if you're going to sharpen a knife, use a steel and a stone. But this, once you've gone through a few rabbits, just to get that edge back on the edge of the blade, this is very useful for that. But of course, they're just accessories. The real work gets done by this here. Air rifle of choice at the moment is the Air Arms Galahad rifle. And this is the high power version. So as you can see, it's the extended length version. There's two versions of the carbine and rifle in the, in the Galahad. This has got the soft touch Duracoat stock on it, which is my favorite nice grippy finish to that. Uh, even when it gets wet and looks pretty cool as well. Now this weighs in about 3.8 kilos, fairly robust rifle, but the point of balance is just behind the pistol grip here. It allows you to maneuver the rifle without being forward heavy. And it's great for taking elevation shots so typically around the woods squirrels rooks so for me having the Galahad with that point of aim it's almost straight down onto your hand so that's pretty fantastic this is in 2.2 caliber and you can see it does have the power adjustment on here as well I have it right the way up at full power which is about 30 foot pounds so this with the Diablo field 2.2 pellets I zero at 30 meters I'm roughly half a mil dot low at 40 meters and roughly half a mil dot low at 20 meters and by the time we get out to 50 it's between three quarters and a full mil dot so shoots pretty Pretty flat and the great thing about having the Galahad it's got quite a high position for the scope above the barrel which means that for those longer distance shots you don't need quite as much holdover because you're looking down the back end of the pellet's trajectory as it starts to fall so it's a great combination it's our first attempt at a bullpup and it's really got cult following now so it's got this amazing forward cocking lever here so you actually cock with your left hand quite interesting so you hold with your right and cock with your left you don't need to remove the rifle from your shoulder as you're cycling around now I don't tend to shoot that fast of course but it's always good if you've missed your first shot you can see where you went and the animal's still there to take that quick follow-up so without moving your eye away from the scope now of course with air arms you get that legendary quality 35 years of making the very best in precision air guns and the accuracy that comes out of the Galahad is phenomenal so been out on the range this morning at 10 shots at 30 meters through the same hole any very in terms of the, the point of impact was me wobbling back on the bench rather than actually the rifle itself. So the rifle version of this at full charge, 200 bar, will deliver between 50 and 60 shots depending on your ammunition. So there's more than enough there to keep you busy for a full day out in the field. In terms of accessories on that, you can see I've got fitted here a Harris bipod. Now this is actually quite a short Harris bipod. I don't tend to need one too long just because of the depth of the rifle itself. 
Attached to the bottom of the bipod, I have a Vanguard strap. Now I carry this upside down as it were, with the muzzle pointing at the ground. I find that's more comfortable with this rifle. It's much easier for me to grab the rifle, pick it up, and then address it onto my shooting sticks, which are these Vanguard B62s. Now I use these for everything, going out deer stalking for Roebuck, big game over in Alaska. I know them pretty well, pretty affordable, and they're very versatile. So just about every type of rifle and scope combination will fit inside this V here. Top of it pivots, so that you've got lots of maneuverability in the rifle. And of course, it just gives you that extra stability allows you to take shots a little bit further out than you could with freehand. Give yourself the opportunity by the shooting off a bipod or a set of sticks. So on top of this, we've got this pretty amazing Hawk Scope. It's an Air Max Compact 30 SF 3 to 12 by 40. It is a very compact scope designed specifically for bullpup rifles and for compact lightweight maneuverable rifles. It's about 28 centimeters in length and weighs in about 600 grams. So it really is small and compact. It's got a fast focus ocular eye bell to make sure that you've got that really crisp reticle so it's focused perfectly to your eyes. High torque zoom ring, 3 to 12 magnification of course, and it's got these knurled ridges to make sure that it's easy to adjust when you've got gloved hands or cold hands. It's got that 30 mil monotube construction that Hawk is famous for, so incredible rigidity and it's very robust, so it withstands all of the environments. And it's all calibre rated, so if you wanted to use it on another rifle, which is a deer stalking rifle, you could do. So this has been designed primarily for air gunning, but as all Hawk scopes are, they're versatile. Moving a little bit further forward, we have this side focus adjustment here um, from 10 meters all the way up to infinity and that has a three inch parallax adjustment here. And on the outside of that, uh, the glass etch reticle, which has six stages of illumination in red. So once you've found the setting that's perfect for your ambient light conditions, you can switch it off and then switch it back on again quickly. In terms of the turrets themselves, these are capped resettable locking target style turrets. Once you've zeroed the scope, there's an Allen key bolt in there. You just loosen it off, set it back to zero. And then as you're going, you can adjust those if you choose to. I typically don't tend to. I tend to pick a point on the reticle and use that as my aim point. But if you do want to adjust, then, uh, then that's there for you. Now, in terms of the AMX reticle, the spacing between the dots is true mill dots. And then there are bars halfway between each of those. That's very useful for me because I know at 20 meters, I need to aim high by half mill dot and the same again at 40 and then a full mill dot out to 50. So it allows you to take all the guesswork out of things and just place that point of aim exactly where you know it needs to be. So all in all, this scope and this rifle combination really does give you that confidence to take those shots out to around 40, 50 meters. There's perfect lethality in this rifle. It's carrying enough power to do that, but you need to put the pellet in the right place. So I put a lot of time in on the range with these. They seem to be working out really well. And so far, I'm happy with their performance. So the final piece of technology that I've been using whilst out airgun hunting is this. Now this is a Pulsar Helion XP50 thermal imager. Might look a little bit space age, but this really is a game changer. When you're hunting small game in an environment such as this, with all the different colours, textures, depths, shadows, it can sometimes be very difficult to pick out what the outline of a squirrel is, for example. So this, as soon as you put the thermal imager onto the animal, it just shines bright red. You can see exactly what's in front of you. Of course, it's a little bit expensive. I do use this also for deer management and for foxing. It's not the sort of thing I think you'd buy casually for egg and hunting, but for sure, if you've got one that you use for other purposes then definitely bring it along. So this in combination with these binoculars really do help bring the canopy into clear focus. You can see that there's an animal there and you can then identify exactly where it is. My choice for going out, certainly during the summer, is the Deer Hunter Mouflon Light. Now this is in Realtree Edge. I'm not saying you need camo, of course everybody can choose to hunt in their own way, but personally for me, breaking up your outline, softening the edges, allows you to make more movement, allows you to make more mistakes. The Realtree Edge camo is the most advanced camo they've ever made. Lots of detail, lots of depth, so I find it works really well here in Europe and elsewhere in the UK. It's lightweight, it's breathable, but it's also showerproof. This time of the year, it's gonna be warm, you're gonna be moving around, you're gonna be active, so you need something that's gonna be able to take that sweat and moisture away from you. There's a shower, you don't wanna be ducking undercover, you wanna be able to continue out in the woods. Now, it's just a shell outer layer. I like to build my insulation layers up depending on the season. So what I tend to do is wear a shirt or a base layer and then layer up on top of it. So whatever keeps you comfortable, whatever suits you, we're all slightly different. Uh, when it comes to footwear, I'm wearing these Ariat boots at the moment. I like a little bit of support in the angle, not too much, but something that's waterproof, lightweight, and that you can kind of feel the ground. If you are going to stand on a stick, you can feel it's going to break. Or if there's a stone there, you know you might turn your ankle. In forests and woodlands, there's a lot of undulations, lots of holes, you know, where rabbits or badgers have been. And having that great feel underneath your feet, not making those mistakes and disturbing the environment around you is pretty critical when you're trying to be stealthy and then get as close as you can to your chosen quarry. 
So there you have it, that's what I use. For those of you that watch a lot of our videos, you'll know that I don't like taking unnecessary equipment and I do like to take equipment I know very well. So my advice to you is have a really close look at what you take out, try and pare it down to the absolute minimum. If you wanna take a rucksack with your sandwiches or your flask in, if you're going for the whole day, then do so. And if you're out controlling animals, so if you're gonna shoot a lot of pigeons or a lot of rabbits, then a game bag might be something that you choose to take with you. But just for a stroll around the woods here, knocking down some critters and doing some pest control, really you don't need that much. The critical thing is knowing your equipment putting the time in on the range and being comfortable and confident with those shots. The better you are on the range, the more likely it is you're going to be able to transfer those skills out into the field. So let me know what you guys think. What do you use out in the field? What are your essential bits of equipment? Are there any tips that you can pass on to help me improve my effectiveness? All ideas are gratefully received. Leave the comments below in the comments box. So I hope you've enjoyed that, but for more tips, more hunting videos and more advice, then be sure to subscribe and follow us on Facebook and Instagram.